What you're about to see is not real news. It is satire based on real news. The characters you're about to see are not real-life humans. They are frighteningly realistic puppets based on real-life humans. The views expressed in the show are not necessarily those of Starsat, its sponsors, its advertisers, or the nice lady that makes the coffee. In a world gone crazy, one man is hell-bent on making it even crazier. You can shove your statistics up your poop hole, man. If you can't see the white genocide, then you're blind and a doers. So watch it before you become a blind doers with D on your face. But how much crazy can a man give? Yo, do us! Fuck, kill a man, you're a fucking clean. You clean do us? Axe move, you're a fucking. My fucking. Fuck you! Before he has nothing left. Right by the drive! That thing runs off my shoulders! Flipping propaganda of his psycho man! That's the sound that I love! From the depths of madness. What is your name? Neil Diamond! Hmm, I see. Comes the tale of one man's struggle to face reality. You are not being murdered like flies. There's no white genocide. Really? And return to sanity. So, how are you feeling, Steve? Much better, sir. Thank you for asking. Or maybe not. A clockwork Rania, coming soon. In the presence of those assembled here and in full realization of the high calling we assume as presenters of Puppet Nation in the service of you, the people. Do solemnly promise to promote that which will raise the levels of laughter and oppose all that may harm the Puppet Nation. To respect and uphold the final script. And do whatever it takes to make you laugh. So help me, God. I thought you didn't believe in God. I don't. But that's what you're supposed to say. It's an oath. Everyone's been doing it lately. Then you should swear on something you believe in. You you must believe in something. Well, I quite like the Pastafarian religion. Don't you mean Rastafarian? No, Pastafarian. Their God is the flying spaghetti monster. He created the universe, you know. Really? And uh, this uh, flying spaghetti monster, he actually exists? Well, I'll give you a million bucks if you can prove he doesn't. Anyway, I had a dream one night where I was touched by his noodly appendage. I hope he was wearing a condom. If you mock my faith, Justice, so help me, God, I will hunt you down. Don't you mean so help me flying spaghetti monster? Yes, that's what I meant. Let's move away from religion before someone gets hurt. Mm. Good idea, especially if that someone is going to be me. Right, folks, let's get this show on the road. Um, you look different. No, I don't. Yes, you do. It's your, it's definitely The news. Okay. EFF Commander-in-Chief Julius Malema has given his first media briefing as his party's leader in parliament. Squarely in Malema's sights once again was DA leader Helen Zilla. He called her South Africa's number one... Yes! Oh, even Julius Malema admits I am number one. Numerian, numero uno, numer eins. I hadn't finished... Malema called you South Africans' number one racist. Oh, really? But, uh, well, anyway, uh, I'm a person who prefers to look for the positive things in life. Number one is still number one. But it doesn't really count if you're the number one racist. I'm sure the Honorable Malema made a mistake. After all, he is already on record saying that he would vote with the DA if we wanted to get rid of Jacob Zuma. Did someone say get rid of Jacob Zuma? Let's do it. 
Right here, right now. Honorable Mr. Malema. Oh, damn. I'll never get used to this. Did you or did you not call Helen Zilla South Africa's number one racist? Uh, maybe. Either you did or you didn't. Come on, my boy. Spit it out. Boy? Did you just call me boy? You are not even the number one racist in South Africa. You are the number that comes before number one. What is that number? What's this cocker here about Helen Zilla being South Africa's number one racist? That's my f***ing position. I worked hard for it and there's no f***ing way a liberal politician from the f***ing DA is going to take it away from me, Steve Hoffmeyer, the real number one racist. What was that? Some interference from TV Oranya or something. Mr. Malema, Miss Zilla, you were saying... If Helen Zilla takes over the government, she will take us back to the land of misery and pain. What land are you talking about? Sudan? Somalia? There will only be misery and pain in South Africa if you people keep voting for the ANC. You people? Haibo, if Helen Zilla wants Jacob Zuma out, we will vote with her. If Jacob Zuma wants Helen Zilla out, we will vote with him. What about principles, Mr. Malema? Don't they come into it? Principles? Principles must stay in school where they belong. I'm talking about... What a clown! Uh-oh, I wouldn't use that word, Mrs. Zilla, if I were you. Oh, Pupo, we could be sued. Clown, 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 Pupo. clown. Pupo. Oh, Lord, Pupo. not again. Goodbye! Do you think we have to apologize to the voters now? No, no, it's okay, Deborah. They're politicians. They can call each other anything. You can insult them, it's okay. Politicians, celebrities, they're fair game. But voters, uh-uh, you can't call them names. So we can't call voters clowns or puppets? Uh-uh, no. And puppets? Can we call the voters puppets? We, the puppets? Mm, I guess it all depends on the context. Well, in the context that every voter has got an ass and that every politician has a hand, they just love to put up the voters' asses. Is it okay then to call the voters puppets? Um, just better not. Okay. Puppets. Hmm? Higher Education Minister and leader of the SA Communist Party, Blaine Zimande, has defended a fellow cabinet minister who pays one of his workers just 26 rand a day. This appalling example of exploitation is brought to you by none other than Senzeni Zokwana, the new Minister of Agriculture, Forestry and Fisheries. Yes, he paid his cattle header 26 rand a month. That is good money for a shepherd. Besides, Comrade Zokwana was a mine worker. He was very poor. Zokwana was the national chairman of the Communist Party. Are you telling me that his salary was so poor that he couldn't afford to pay his workers a living wage? And let's not forget that Anglo Gold Ashanti paid him 1.2 million rand a year while he was president of the National Union of Mine Workers. You see? That is the irrefutable proof that you must join a union if you want a better life. Talking about a better life, so you live in a shack, work seven days a week and earn 26 rand a day. Your boss now earns just over 2 million rand a year. How does that make you feel? Hey. I feel very bad. Wrong answer, comrade. You feel very good. Yeah. I feel very good. Has your boss told you if you're getting a raise? A raise? What is this thing? Did the minister say he'd be paying you more money now that he is in the cabinet? No, no. I sleep on the floor next to the cabinet. No money for the bed. What the comrade means is that he has no need for a bed. In some parts of the country, it is tradition for cattle headers his age to sleep on the floor. How old are you, sir? I am 108 years old. He doesn't understand numbers. He is probably getting paid 26,000 rand a month, but thinks it is 26 rand. So, Gawena, I know numbers. 750i BMW, 1,100,000. So he knows numbers. Big deal. Gotta go, comrades. Aluta continua. Bucky's Buerta and Victor Mechfield are back together against the world. Well, against a world 15. Hi guys, long time. 
So, back in the box, eh? Yeah, man. Uh, it feels like to play rugby in South Africa again. Yeah, thanks to Heineken Meyer for putting us in the squad. The Springboks just aren't the same without you two morons. I, I beg your pardon. Players, what do you miss most about playing for the box? I miss being outside on weekends. My wife makes me help with the housework. <laughs> I miss mooring hikes. Uh, I tackled this one hike in the parking lot the other day. I had to make like a 40 was stealing a car. Uh, but uh, I just wanted to feel that rush again. You tackled someone in the parking lot? Yeah. Uh, uh, one of these flying tackles hit him right in the back with my shoulder. You should have seen him. He went down like a sack of charcoal. Mm. This guy, was he black? Yeah, of course. Otherwise, how could I make out he was stealing a cabbie, huh? Mm. Parkies. Okay, shut up, everyone! Sergeant Furi, take your fingers out of Constable Mapundu's nose. Right! Now! Some of you say we are not training you properly for handling violent protests. So... We have been sent this. Hello, my fellow police officers, and welcome to this video. First up, how do we identify if a protester is dangerous or not? This is easy. Dangerous protesters are identified in the two following ways. One, they are human. And two, they are protesting. Which brings us to phase two. There have been reports that police have been using the wrong ammunition in their guns. You must use the correct ammunition. First, put rubber bullets in your weapon. Then use this gun to beat people into submission. Now, put live ammunition in your gun and fire. Remember officers, Every life is precious. So if you shoot someone, try to shoot them in the front and not in the back. Shooting them in the back, eh, that is very difficult for me to explain. Thank you, troops, and good luck. We're going to an ad break and we'll be back in a minute. Whoa, hold your horses, cowboy. Where is the fire? What the hell are you talking about? What's with the new Speedy Gonzalez star? I thought you enjoyed a bit of gay banter. Banter away then. And you'll just sit there being gay, huh? No way, Jose. This is a two-way street. Fine, what do you want to banter about? Well, since you brought up the whole gay thing... I, I did no such thing. So you won't talk about gayness because you're homophobic? I'm not homophobic. I just don't gay like... Gay people. I don't like to be touched by anyone. What do you mean? Like this? Mm -mm, I, get off me. I, mm, I'm a security help. <laughs> That's hilarious. A man who doesn't like to be touched. That's about as rare as Bafana Bafana winning a game. Now you're making me anxious. Oh, in that case, I will not be using the bathroom. What? Generalized anxiety disorder, the Oscar sickness. Oh, right. It's okay. I'm only anxious to finish the news and get the hell out of here. So what are you waiting for? As I was saying, we'll be right back after this break. I know. You had a nose job, didn't you? What the? Yes, it was a nose job. Uh. Hey. Mister, I am a coffee farmer from Zambia. Zespresso buys coffee beans from me. This is my first day of the farm in four years. I came here to see where my coffee goes. That's great. I'm a huge supporter of fair trade with African coffee farmers. Want one? So you look like a Valuto to me, buddy. Huh? You're gonna love this. 
Huh? What did I tell you? This tastes like shit. What is it? It's espresso. What else? How much does it cost? About a dollar a cup. How cheap is that? That is what I get paid in a month. Hey, f*** yourself, George Clooney. He recognized me. Espresso. Go f*** yourself. So? So what? Well, we need to do the next segment of news, but I'm afraid I'm going straight in. You're afraid? Why? In case you accuse me of being a sexist or a racist if I don't do the gay banter thing again. Don't be so sensitive. Just read the damn news. You sure? Absolutely. Go right ahead. In other news... So how about the Stormers Sharks game, huh? Really, Deborah? I don't know. I didn't watch it. Why not? Too many white players for you. I swear, if you didn't let me, I would... Just kidding, just kidding. Carry on. You had a lift, right? It's a face lift. Oh, come on. Just a little tuck really, here and really, a, just a little tuck there. Uh, here a tuck, there a tuck, everywhere a tuck, tuck. Uh, hey. Battle lines have been drawn between the ANC and the owner of a pawn shop that has opened near Parliament. I really don't see what all the fuss is about. Parliament is already full of wankers. Who cares about a few more hanging around in adult world? I think you're missing the point. Rubbish. There is very little difference between passing laws and assing whores. That doesn't even make sense. Have you been drinking? I'm just saying that both institutions are in the business of screwing the electorate. I'm not sure that adult world deserves to be called an institution. The ANC? You called? Wow, that was quick. No, no, no. It is part of the ANC's new early response system. We cannot afford to wait five years before listening to the people. Not that you are people. You are journalists. But still, we are here for you. Except when we are not. Mr. Montache, I want to ask you about adult world. No, no, no. That wasn't me. I did not leave my office all day. You can check with my secretary. Calm down. I wasn't accusing you of anything. I wanted to ask why the ANC was so opposed to having a branch of adult world near parliament. It's a legitimate business after all. Members of parliament do not wish to be reminded of sex every time they come to work. This is a serious house and we conduct serious business. Hey, dude. Yeah, we also run a serious business. Hey, haven't I seen you in my shop? I was working. I didn't leave my office once. How do you know what day I'm talking about? I am in my office every day. You're both driving me crazy. Hey, we got a movie like that. Uh, it's called Driving Miss Crazy. Have you seen it? No, is it good? Uh, Justice, we should get back to the real news. Cheers, guys. And remember, keep it in your pants. Clouds of controversy are once again gathering over FIFA's head. Soccer officials allegedly accepted at least $5 million in return for their support for Qatar's 2022 World Cup bid. All this bribery and corruption, they're worse than our government. I knew there was monkey business the moment I heard Qatar had won the bid. I mean, really, Qatar? Do they even play football? They do, actually. But it's not about the soccer, is it? No. It's about the money. Who said money? I want my cut. It's incredible. You mentioned money and Sam Platter magically appears. Mr. Blatter, a FIFA investigator has found secret documents reportedly showing that Mohammed bin Hammam, the former Asian Football Confederation president, made payments to soccer officials in return for their support for the Qatar bid. And who got these so-called payments? Tell me that! Uh, well, apparently the money was paid into accounts controlled by the presidents of 30 African football associations. So, what is the problem here? You people live in Africa, yes? So you know Africa is poor, yes? So why not let the poor little Africans make a little bit of money? Excuse me? It's bribery for God's sake. Yes, but it is also Africa. You people have needs, and Qatar has needs. It needs a World Cup. The moment you announced that Qatar had won the 2022 games, everyone knew something was up. Qatar is, pardon my French, a flaming shithole run by fundamentalist nutjobs. Don't let them talk to you like that, boss. Shut up, Danny. Listen, you two. South African soccer officials fixed at least five matches as the 2010 World Cup. 
You are worse than Kata! Wow, but Mr. Blatter, excuse us for a second. Mr. Jordan, why on earth did you fire Gordon Igazunt? Look, it makes no difference whether Bafana Bafana loses under Gordon Igazunt or someone else. He has a point. Wouldn't it make more sense to keep Igazunt and fire the team? Anyway, where are you going to find another coach? Kata! He will come from Kata! Uh, boss, are you sure? Shut up, Danny! Good evening and welcome to the show where I do what I'm best at. Ripping people a new asshole. And tonight is no different. I can't wait to tear this young dude a new one. Musi Maimani, we're starting to hear this name a hell of a lot. Hello, Deborah. Well, if it isn't Helen Zilla's new poster child for post-Mandela colorblind political living. Deborah, I wouldn't say that I'm a poster child. You know, I'm just a cussy boy. Yeah. <laughs> I don't buy it. I'm not selling oh, it. Oh, of course you are. You're perfect, aren't you? You've even got those little imperfections in place so that you don't seem too perfect, so that you can be relatable. Well, I'm not buying it. That accent is just way too private school for my liking. That's what the DA is all about, Deborah. Creating equality for black and white alike so that we start seeing past superficial things like race and accents. You calling me superficial? I know you're faking it, buddy. Nobody's that squeaky clean. So what is it, huh? Come out with it. You're a drug addict. You're part of a porn ring. Tender rigging. What? Huh? What is it? I can't admit to something I'm not, Deborah. I'm not any of those things. I'm just me. Musi. Gassy boy. Oh. Mmm. Yeah. So what's your plan, huh? Tell us your big plan for fixing the country. Well, we've got a lot of work to do, Deborah. It's important to improve our education system, to help develop small businesses and create jobs. But first, we need to tackle corruption. Oh, yeah, of course. And what's your big move for that one? The first thing I'm doing on that point is starting a Twitter campaign with the hashtag Fight Corruption. It's a foolproof plan. Yeah, all right, I'm bored, cussy boy. Moosey. So what's up with the double M spelling? You don't see me spelling my name with a double D. Well, are you? What? A double D. Did, did you? What? What the f*** just happened there? I'm not sure. Did you just come on my show and make a joke at my expense? No, no, of course not. No, I didn't think so, because that would be completely mad. I mean, who would take that chance? Not me. No, certainly not you. Not much of a risk taker. Now get the f*** off my show. Go polish that squeaky clean image of yours. Whoopee! Another ad break. Stand by, folks, while Deborah accuses me of napalming Vietnamese villages in 1972. So it was you! Yes, and I killed Kennedy. Which Kennedy? All of them. I killed the whole family. You must have had help. I did. My friend Charles Manson gave me a hand. Now I know you're lying. Charlie was doing 10 years in the McNeil Island Penitentiary when Kennedy was killed. Nice try. How come you know so much about Charles Manson? Gosh, is that the time? Stay with us. We'll be back in a moment. Oh, get out of here, you perv. And thank you. They're all natural and they hang just fine. Poor people smell bad. Poor people make you feel bad about yourself. Jeez, I'm sorry, okay? I don't have any change. Really, look. I, I don't. Stop accusing me. Oh, man. No more. A new era in personal denial. Brought to you from the house of Oblivious. Blase. From the house of Oblivious. Blase. Because you're too rich to have to look at the poor. Time now for a look at what's happening in the good old US of A. What, would you like to say something? Uh -uh. I didn't think so. We take you now live to the White House for an unscheduled address from President Obama. It's with a heavy heart that I stand here today, forced once again to ask you to sacrifice. 
I really need you to send me more Candy Crush Lives. Haven't you been getting my Facebook requests? I'm only on level three here, people. I have the National Security Agency working nonstop on a hack to get me free boosters, but till then, help a brother out. All the other world leaders finished the game like months ago, and they're calling me to razz me. Today, I was getting it from the Prime Minister of Belgium. Belgium! Yeah, I know, it's like the shitty France. Hey, Hill. Yes, Bill. Since you're thinking about being president, I think it's time I gave you some advice on covering up your illicit office affairs. I won't be having any affairs, Bill. Leave me alone and go find some bowling on TV. Hey, Hill. Yes, Bill. You know that you're going to be wearing the first set of official presidential pajamas made for a lady. Yes, Bill. You should think about if you want them to be crotchless. That's disgusting. Go play with your cars. Okay. Hey, Hill, I have some specs here for your official presidential dildo. Get your perverted ass out of my office and stay out for the next two and a half years. Good God. Joining me now is Academy Award-winning actress Charlize Theron. Thank you for having me, Scott. So, Charlize, may I call you Charlize? Sure. Lizzie, let's talk about your new movie. I was taken by how throughout the film your hair glistens like sunlight on the waters of the Drakensberg. Thank you. What a lovely thing to say. That's a mountain range. And your eyes shine as blue as the as the big hole in the Kimberly. Okay. I'm impressed with your knowledge of my country. Just a little hobby of mine. Perhaps you'd like to talk more about it over a glass of Stellenbosch Chardonnay. Hold on. Did you bring me on your show just to hit on me? Would you take that as a compliment? Absolutely not. How about if I told you that's the only reason I'm even doing a show for this backwater country? I'm out of here. Wait, wait. I mean, beautiful. I, I meant, wait. I meant beautiful country. Charlize. Lizzie. Shar Shar. Damn it. Okay, guys, let's start working on that underwear model with the weird name. Candace Swimming Pool? Well, that's it from us. By next week, our politicians will hopefully have hit the ground and given us lots of new material to get our teeth into. Don't you mean hit the ground running? That's what I meant, yes. But it would have been wrong to have the words politician and running in the same sentence. I bet you're going to see some of them losing weight this year. Yes, with the EFF Teletubbies in the parliament, there's going to be a lot less food to go around. They sure will be. <sighs> so really, you've noticed nothing. Uh, I, um... Uh, you are all the same. I don't know. You look different. My uh... hair, Justice. Oh, yes, you... You New color and a cut, a Groupon special. So what do you think, huh? Great, great, uh, amazing. It's um, it's you. Oh yeah, right. Anyway, you never try anything new. You're so boring. Uh, what? You want me to get a color and a cut? No, just cut. 